We're back with my very special guest, Phyllis Diller. We're here at Resorts International Casino Hotel in Atlantic City. Before we took the commercial break, I did make reference to a book um, that I understand changed your life. I happen to have a copy of the book here. It's called The Magic of Believing. And I would just like to read the quote that's on the front page of the book. Okay, yes. by Phyllis Diller. It says, The Magic of Believing Changed My Life. Read it and any problem can be solved. Happiness can be achieved. Great awards can be reaped. You really mean that? Oh, I, re I really mean that. Look at me. <laughs> I have everything that I want out of life. And if I, I hadn't read that book, I don't know what I would be doing now. Well, I just got the book last night, and you can be sure <laughs> that I am going to read this book. Your laugh has become your trademark. That's true. That's just my natural, normal laugh. It, well, I heard in the beginning when you started laughing that some friends of yours said, look, Phyllis, uh, give up that stupid laugh. <laughs> yes. Well, you get a lot of really bum advice when you're down. See, yeah. when, when you are small and beginning and you haven't made it, everybody's smarter than you are and they all want to tell you what to do and where to go, how to do it, and they're all wrong. <gasps> all wrong. If they knew what to do, they'd be doing it. But how did you know what to do? Because I had read this book and I listened to my own self. I mean, I knew what I was doing. After I read this book, I believed in myself. You see, if you believe in yourself, you don't follow every straw in the wind. You can't, people can't sway you. If you believe in yourself, you follow your own dream, your own path. Because you, and you have to do that, especially when you're starting. Otherwise, people will just mess you all up because they have a tendency to be negative. I told my dearest friend that I was going to become a comic, and she told me to keep my day job. Uh -huh. You look different. Do you feel different? I feel better every day. I, I feel that I'm a better person every day because I work on myself every day. Yeah. Gee, that's a good message. Today I'm living on raw carrots. What are you doing? <laughs> well, today, oh, I haven't had anything to eat yet, but raw Terrific. carrots are a good idea. <laughs> I'm on a diet. Is that what you're doing? Really? Oh, I'm on, I oh. do everything I can to improve myself. Why? I learn new words. I think new thoughts. And I eat raw carrots and try to stay skinny, try to be healthy, try to spread cheer and happiness, never talk negative, and never tell anyone they're not doing the right thing. I mind my own business, basically. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, I'm a mother-in-law. <laughs> you, uh, ha, ha, ha. What was the best advice that you received? Well, uh, it wasn't advice. Advice is, is sometimes is, is so negative. I mean, people tell you, don't, don't try it and don't do it. You can't do it. The best thing that best thing I received was out of this book, The Magic of Believing by Claude Bristol. I read the book, and it's a system of thought. And it's something in, there's a system in this book that if you use it and you do it, it works. But most people just read the book and put it aside. I read it for two years. I underlined it. And then I, I leafed through it every day for two years and firmly got it, this method uh, in my, my head. And I, I did it. It's all done in the head, you know. The mind controls Absolutely. everything. Yeah. Did, did you ever meet the author of the book? He was dead when I found the book. Uh-huh. Ah, well, certainly, uh, you know, you have given new life to the book. The book has been uh, uh, reprinted many times. Many since, times, since yes. It's, I've it. kept that book alive for 30 years. There are many, many uh, good self-help books on the market, and they come out constantly, and they're all good, but this is the one that did it for me. Yeah, okay. Now, you've written five books. Yes, true. Okay, your own books. But uh, mine are non-books. They're the kind you give to Aunt Hattie when she has her appendix out. <laughs> okay, because they're fun, and they're I've funny. read one of them. But how about Phyllis Diller's autobiography? We just have a minute left, but would you write your autobiography from a serious point of view? I guess I would. And if so, what is the message that, that you'd like to convey? I think my message would be mostly inspirational for women, so that, to tell them that it's never too late and that they can do it on their own and they don't have to be timid. I, I majored in timidity, and <sighs> you can get well and cure yourself of being afraid. Okay, well, you certainly have cured yourself, and you certainly you know, send out good messages. I'd really love to see the book. Is it going to come out? Are you going to do your autobiography? Well, I'm not sure the time is right. Timing is everything, you know, Arlene. I'm, I'm just not sure the time is right. I think that uh, I have to really believe in it to make it work. Yeah, well, I believe in you, and I'm going to read the book, The Magic of Believing. Terrific. And uh, you've been an inspiration to me, and I thank you very much for being a guest on my show. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, that's a lot easier. Yeah, I, I would think so. Yes, I, I would is. guess so. Well, you, you came across a book I read, and I don't know anything about this. I want you to tell me about it. The Magic of Believing. Yes. Now, tell me about that book. It was a big influence, wasn't it? Uh, the biggest. Yeah. Why well, I shouldn't say the biggest. It was evidently caught me with an open mind. Uh, it was a book about self-help 
they've been, they've been around forever. Mm -hmm. There's Norman Vincent Peale, and and he was before and a uh, dear man. And he used to say that we're in the same job. You know, mine is to make people happy and laugh, and and his is to make them be happy mm -hmm. and have a good time. And but in his his books, even though I read them all, I I, I went back as far as uh, Think and Grow Rich. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one of the older, old, 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 old. To you know how to raise yourself up in every way. Uh, I always. But I read them all. It was just this Claude Bristol magic of believing that got to me because it didn't involve God or anybody else. Just me and, and each person. And making person. yourself a better person. Well, Liberace will tell you the same thing I do, that it was the turning point in his life. Mm -hmm. well, well, no, it's, it's sort of use your mind, use your thoughts, use them. Don't throw them away, just don't let them lie there. You know, it, there was always electricity. Yes. But it wasn't plugged in. Mm -hmm. And you know, this we're book helps with you plug it in. We're working with candles and yeah. stuff, it, it was mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And see, our mind is so great. The great computer, the great computer. Yes, the Purple Onion, San Francisco. Yes, that was a big time, wasn't it? It was. <laughs> you know, it takes a lot of guts to be a stand-up comedian, doesn't it? Oh, a, a, a barrel of guts. Yeah, it's the main thing you have to have because when you're unknown, you will take unusual rejection. Mm -hmm. You must be able to take that without becoming destroyed. You must not accept that. That's what I learned out of the magic of believing. Yeah. I learned how not to accept the negative thoughts that other people put on you. Even your parents, in trying to bring you up right, maybe they will bring you up with so many fears. Mm -hmm. Warn you about the yeah. guy with candy. Warn yeah. you Because you've bombed. Everybody's bombed. You bombed at the Fontainebleau one time, right? I did one show and got fired. <laughs> well, how, how quick can that happen? Yeah. You, you, you know, in life, to be the most you is the way to get the furthest, the fastest, the bestest. To be unique and to, to be yourself. To be you. Mm -hmm. And you know, teenagers, they want to be all look alike. Yeah. Well, that's a teenage thing. See, that's a, that's, that, this is all under the, the word fear. Mm -hmm. Now, the main thing I learned about the magic, the book, no fear. No fear. Fear doesn't exist. Let's talk about Fang. You, what have you learned about life? Oh, that's a big question. I'm still learning. Uh, you should learn to the day you draw your last breath. You should keep learning, learning. And I am still learning, uh, happily so, happily so. Uh, but what I've learned about life that I think is truly important is to be a good person. To mm -hmm. do everything you can, to, to be the most you, don't be afraid to be you, because the more you, I've mentioned this before, Yes. Don't, you don't have to copy people, you don't have to be like somebody else, you don't have to, uh, if, if, if uh, Jennifer is skinny and just plays with her food, you don't have to do that, you can eat and enjoy. You don't have to be like anybody else. The best thing is to be like you and be the best you and be kind, gentle, sweet, and darling. And during the break, you mentioned something I thought that was quite significant. You said you just can't hold bitterness or anger inside you. Oh, no, no, no. Because no. you've been wronged. We all have feel we've been wronged and unjustly accused of this or that. Uh, yeah. And you have some really great examples. Somebody didn't think you would ever make it in show business, never make it in comedy. That's true and told me so. Well, you see, I did, from the book, Magic of Believing, I uh, invented something for myself psychically. I had a white feather cape, which uh, I was wearing at all times. And, you know, like water off a duck. No matter what they said, it never penetrated. So I never took, I never accepted any negativity. I only had my own private, positive thoughts. Oh, wonderfully put. Phyllis, you, uh, I know you, you're painting now and you love your painting. Uh, you're all interested in so many things and it has been an absolute joy to have <laughs> you on this program. 
and uh, I want to thank you, and uh, our audience thanks you for being with us today. Uh, a long life and more happy days and well, success. My pleasure to finally meet my person I've been a fan of many, many, many years. You're very kind. I'm John Palmer. This is Encore, and we will see you next time. chance to ask you questions. So raise your hand. We're going to have a, a staff member come over and chat with you if you have a question for Phyllis Diller. There we go, right there. In the Hi, back. I'm Cameron Esposito. Ms. Diller, how did you, you had a long career. You, Point. How did you maintain your longevity? How, how, how did you maintain your longevity? How did you continue to, to well, do stand-up so long? I, I'll, I'll tell you what. I think about it all the time. It's part of me. I am a, a comic. I was born a comic and, and found my fruition. And uh, I don't know what fruition is, but I found it. <laughs> and, and, and I, uh, what was the question? <laughs> how, how do you think you've been able oh, to that. do it so long? You know? I drink a lot of water mm -hmm. uh, and I, with a lot of gin. <laughs> And I, I, I am happy, happy. I've, I've converted everything in my life into love. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Therefore, I'm, I'm healthy. Healthy. Healthy, yeah. healthy. And I even know how, how to mentally not have pain. Because I really should have rheumatism. You should, yes. I really should. But, but I know how to, to make my own, use my own brain. This is your computer. You, so a lot of people don't use it very much, but use your computer to get whatever you want in the world. It's so true. It's that book, The Secret. There's a whole book out now with manifesting your thoughts. That's just a copy of the magic of believing. Exactly right. All they did was add religion. Right. And the reason I could accept the magic was I didn't want to stop and bother with God. Right. I just wanted the magic. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> Take what works for you.